Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, wanted to do a build for Queen Galfrey. You can only unlock her as a party member if you have successfully romanced her in the game. And I know a lot of you have not been able to do that. So I figure this is probably new content. Now, this is going to start out with a little bit of a rant. And I want to say up front, this rant comes from a place of ignorance. All right. I am not familiar with tabletop Pathfinder lore. I have never played tabletop Pathfinder. I am only familiar with the games. So it's completely possible that Alcan has done everything right, that I am the one who has things confused and things are the way they are supposed to be. But from the standpoint of someone who has played the games and more specifically played this game and heard how much they hype Queen Galfrey up and make her sound like the crusader to end all crusaders, the fact that everything you get from her, you can get from Sela is extremely disappointing to me. First and foremost, she's a regular human. All right, just, just regular old human. Despite the fact that she's been extending her age however many years and she's over 100 years old, that doesn't seem to account for anything. Even Arushale gets ascending succubus. Like she's a race that you can't even pick yourself if you're rolling a mercenary or a brand new character. Yeah, Gwen Grafrey being plain old human, it's just kind of weird to me. I mean, she's an 100 year old human. Doesn't that count for something? And then she's just plain old paladin. There's no like special Queen Galfrey version of paladin. She doesn't get anything new or in addition. It's just plain old straight up paladin. And honestly, when the point at which you can unlock her, you only have an hour, maybe an hour and a half of game left. So nine times out of 10, Sela is level 20 by the time you actually get to Queen Galfrey. Galfrey is level 14. So technically, Sela is more of a paladin than Queen Galfrey is when you actually unlock her, which again, to me, is bananas. This doesn't make any sense to me. Like there should be something special and unique about Queen Galfrey that you can't get any other way. And that is just not the case. Capping all of this off, the equipment that she comes with, mediocre as hell. She's got plus five armor and that's all it is, just some plus five armor. She's got a plus five charisma headband. Okay, you're telling me that she doesn't have a crown? She doesn't have like some special crazy crown that does something special for her that only she can put on? What the hell? She's got a plus three protection ring. Are you kidding me? A plus two long sword. You're level 15. We're at the very, very end of the game, an hour from end game slots, and y'all gave her a plus two long sword? A plus four shield, plus four composite bow, and then she's got a plus four physical might. Come on now. Come on, like, like this is, this is beyond underwhelming. Am I crazy? Like, is there something, I guess this must be consistent with the Lord that she's regular plain old okie dokie cause from where I'm sitting, what's all the hype about? Anyway, moving on, let's get into the build. She, as I've stated previously, is a paladin. Paladin is a fantastic class. So obviously it's fantastic with Galfrey, um, getting access to it as well. Being a paladin means she has access to paladin proficiency, so she's proficient with all armor along with simple and martial weapons. And she also has alignment restriction, which means she has to be lawful good. It doesn't matter. You definitely do not have the opportunity to change Galfrey's alignment. And then she's also going to get access to smite evil, which again is fantastic. It allows the paladin to add her charisma bonus to her attack rolls and adds her paladin level to all damage rolls made against the target of her smite. 
and Smite Evil attacks automatically bypass any damage resistance the creature possesses. In addition, by level 11, and of course she's level 14 when you get her, you're going to get Mark of Justice, which allows you as a swift action to give those bonuses to the entire team. Very, very nice, makes it very easy for your entire team to whittle down hardcore boss enemies. She's also going to get Lay on Hands, which allows her to heal both herself and other party members. And she's going to get uh, Channel Positive Energy, which allows her to heal the entire team at the same time. She's going to get a variety of auras that are going to give her immunity to certain things enemies try to do while giving the entire team saving throw increases against that same effect. So she's immune to fear, she's immune to charm spells, and she's immune to compulsion spells, and all of the team is going to get a bonus to saving throws against those types of effects. She also gets access to mercies, and a mercy means when you use lay on hands on yourself or a party member, not only is it going to heal them, but it's going to remove a particular effect as well. So for her bill, she has diseased, exhausted, fatigued, and stunned as the effects that she will remove. And then you'll be able to choose two more effects that she'll be able to remove before level 20. She also gets Divine Grace, which means she adds a bonus equal to her charisma on all saving throws. And she has Divine Health, which means she's immune to diseases, including supernatural and magical diseases, and mummy rot. Very, very useful when you're going up against Undead. Now, unlike Sila, she has chosen, well, unlike the way I usually build up Sila. So I usually choose the pet, which is going to give you a horse. She chose to do Divine Weapon Bond. So with a Divine Weapon Bond as a standard action, she can call upon the aid of a celestial spirit for one minute per paladin level. And this spirit grants the weapon a plus one enhancement bonus. By the time you reach level 20, that enhancement bonus is going to be plus six. And you can add specific weapon properties like axiomatic, brilliant energy, flaming, flaming burst, things of that nature to the weapon using these enhancement bonuses. So. It, it can be very, very cool, and depending on the build and how you've developed yourself, you can use these to do massive damage against opponents. Of course, her deity is I Am A Day. She has no background whatsoever. And then we'll get into her list of feats. I'm actually not that mad at her list of feats. It's in an extremely weird order, but I think overall this covers most of the things we want her to have. So she starts with critical focus and extra lay on hands. Who gets critical focus at level one? I don't think that's even possible, <laughs> but, but moving right along. Then she has improved critical longsword, improved initiative, power attack, staggering critical, toughness, y'all know how I feel about toughness, and weapon focus longsword. You know, not the worst build that we've seen from the uh, potential party members. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go crazy about that. And then from there, we get into the last five levels, which you're able to choose yourself. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at the build. Now, when it comes to skills, she has 15 ranks in mobility, knowledge, world, and persuasion. You might be saying this is only an hour before the end of the game. Anyway, who cares? Why are you even bothering with this? But remember that Alcat has already stated they are going to release DLC that is uh, post game. So theoretically, you would be able to bring Queen Galfrey as a party member into that post game content. And so because of that, it's probably to your advantage to go ahead and build her up right. I'm definitely good with her having persuasion. She's got sky high charisma. Makes sense for her to do this. Knowledge world is just all right. Um, she's definitely not going to have as high a score of it as some of the other party members you get access to. But if this fits for your team, cool. I don't think it makes any sense to have her be the one who's leveling up mobility. She's going to take a penalty on it from both full plate and her heavy shield. So instead, I will put that point into perception. And honestly, if you don't need her to have knowledge world, might want to go ahead and stick that into lower nature. It's going to help when it's going to help delay when she gets fatigued or exhausted. And then for your level 15 feet, 
The game recommends that you get persuasive. I don't want to do that. Instead, I would recommend, I think you all already know where I'm gonna go, Outflank. I feel like all melee characters and archers should have Outflank. It's gonna increase your flanking bonus on attack rolls to plus four. And whenever you score a critical hit against a flank creature, it provides an attack of opportunity from your ally. She has got improved critical and critical focus. We will be getting mythical improved critical. So this makes sense. And then for her mercy, I prefer to put mercy on effects that are permanent and in some cases very difficult to remove. So I'm gonna take paralyzed here. At level 16, increase strength and continue to increase strength during your level ups. At level 17, get corn against smash. At level 18, I go ahead and grab cursed. And then at level 19, I get intimidating prowess. Okay, so now that we've went through the character levels, let's go ahead and take a look at the mythic options. Add mythic level one, get ever ready. Add mythic level two, get destructive shockwave. Add mythic level three, get thundering blows. Mythic level four, get improved critical longsword. At mythic level five, get leading strike. At mythic level six, get power attack mythic. At mythic level seven, get last stand. At Mythic level eight, get flawless attacks. At Mythic level nine, get abundant smite. And then at Mythic level 10, you basically have several options available to you. Um, of course, you can get unrelenting assault if you wanted to. Um, you could get weapon focus longsword. If you were trying to make Queen Galfrey your healer, you could pick up boundless healing. Um, you've got a bunch of different options available to you. Any of them will work. And remember, since you're getting her so late, you're picking all nine back to back to back to back to back. So it's not like you're doing a bunch of gameplay and then trying to pick them in between. You're just taking these all at once. So this order would probably be different if I was getting her at level one, but since you're picking them all at once, again, the order doesn't really matter. Okay, now we're done with the levels. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Paladin Spellbook. For level one, you definitely want Blessed Weapon. It's gonna allow all critical threats against evil foes to automatically confirm, so every threat is a critical hit. All of the enemies you're gonna be facing after um, meeting Queen Galfrey or recruiting Queen Galfrey as a party member are gonna be evil, so this is very, very useful. Veil of Heaven is gonna give you a plus two sacred bonus to AC. I haven't found any items that will give you that kind of AC bonus, so this is useful the entire game. And then we just threw in protection from evil chaos because we had a couple of extra uh, spell slots to fill up. But at level two, you're gonna get protection from chaos, evil communal. It could be useful to throw this on there um, while you're running out and about, more than likely not based upon all the equipment you probably have by now. Or of greater coverage is going to ensure that the entire party is immune to fear, magical or otherwise, very useful if you do not have Sila for whatever reason. Effortless armor is gonna ensure that her heavy armor does not impact her speed and it reduces the armor's armor check penalty as you level up. So very, very nice spell for her to have. And then bestow grace. When you touch the subject, you grant that creature a sacred bonus to its saving throws equal to its charisma bonus, if any, on all saving throws. There are some creatures, especially if you have like a sorcerer on your party, they might be able to benefit from that. Um, at level three, Archon's Aura, it is not affected by a target spell resistance. If they fail a will save, a difficulty class 23, the target is gonna take a negative two penalty attack rolls and saving throws. And to armor class for the duration of the spell, it's one minute per level, so it'd be 20 minutes. Um, at the time that you get her and with a couple of castings on it, more than likely this should last you the entire time that you're going to need it. And then I've always liked prayer. It's going to give a plus one luck bonus on attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, saves, and skill checks for you and your entire party. While foes, if they fail the difficulty class, are going to take a negative one penalty on such rolls. And then finally at level four, Eagle Soul is going to give a sacred bonus to AC and to strength while giving you some elemental resistance. And then Crusader's Edge is going to allow you to deal some additional damage. So definitely nice to go ahead and put on her. 
And then we just threw on Angelic Aspect Greater. Um, it's gonna give a plus four racial bonus on saves against poison. Protective Aura provides a plus four deflection bonus to AC and a plus four resistance bonus on saving throws. And when we look at the inventory, I did add a few things for her. So she's got some gloves that when she ever she does a critical hit, the enemy is going to suffer a negative two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions. Very useful for Nanio. We gave her a plus four enhancement bonus belt for strength and constitution. Um, if I didn't have Sela on the team, I would have taken her plus six belt. It's definitely better for Galfrey. Uh, we kept the plus five plate armor. Um, half the pair gives us a plus two bonus on attack rolls and plus two bonus to AC. Kept the plus six headband. That's actually pretty good. Um, would have given her a cloak of resistance plus six. I should have one of those laying around somewhere. Um, clemency of shadows. While in this state, you share an unbreakable bond. Under the effect, all members get an additional attack of opportunity per round. If an attack of opportunity was a critical hit, the enemy is staggered. And if one of the party members falls unconscious, a giant spider is summoned into the fight. We also gave her a ring of protection plus five. And then she has radiance, a plus six long sword with a spell resistance of five plus the welder's class level um, that goes to everybody in the entire party. And of course, it's dealing um, holy damage. So it's going to deal additional damage against enemies that are evil. And then finally, we gave her a plus. Uh, this is a plus four shield, but I think uh, not on this playthrough, but I've definitely found plus five shields that you could go ahead and throw on her. So that rounds her build out. Unfortunately, I can't show you any combat with her because it's so late in the game, it'd be impossible for me to do it without spoiling the area for you. But you get an idea of what she's about. Basically, it's exactly the same as Sila, except instead of using a two-hander, she's using a sword and board. Having her on the party is really more so about the aesthetics, just knowing that, hey, I've been following this chick all this time. She's this great heralded hero, and now she's coming out with me. It's not because necessarily she's going to give you something that the other party members don't give you because that's not the case, especially since more than likely you have a good aligned party and you've had Sela in your party the entire time. But that's the build. Let me know down in the comment section if you have any feedback or if there'd be anything different you would do with the build. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.